right, here we go. Another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kudair, local realtor here with the Sutton Group Ottawa. And today I am joined with Amanda Stevens from SEO Plus. Amanda, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate your making the time for us to come in on the podcast and let the people know about who is SEO Plus and all of that stuff. I want to start off with just a bit of background about SEO Plus. What's the story behind it? How long has it been around? What do you guys deliver? Just kind of like the 10,000 foot overview. I would, I would be happy to do so. So yeah, SEO Plus, we're a full-service digital marketing agency founded and headquartered right here in Ottawa in 2012. So coming into our 12th or 13th year, we do all kinds of digital marketing. As the name implies, SEO, search engine optimization uh, is our, our primary service. Uh, we also have expertise in paid advertising, primarily Google and now Meta. Uh, as well as web design, web design and development. But we're also supported by other departments depending on you know the, the market needs and so on. So everything from digital PR, uh, social media, content writing, uh, you name it, our team probably has our, our hands in it. Sounds great. Now, SEO, like the term SEO, search engine optimization, has been kind of thrown around for the last, I want to say, 15, 20 years. Maybe. So it's kind of like the, the, the whole advent of Google and all of that stuff and people wanting to, you know, be out there, be a little bit more prominent and things like that. What does it mean to be search engine optimized? Yeah. So we actually st- were founded by Brock, my my brother actually, but the co-founder of SEO Plus was a web designer first and foremost. And he noticed there was an issue in the market where clients would say, we actually have a beautiful website. Mm. Our issue is that we can't get anyone to find it. Yeah. No, People are, are searching for us. We're nowhere to be found. And he actually hadn't even really known the term before then and then did a bunch of research and came in. So search engine optimization, right? Whether Google is is for sure the primary search engine. There, there's certainly other ones that are uh, becoming more prominent. Uh, and of course, all the different kinds of search now, YouTube and Facebook and TikTok and, and all of those, yeah. those platforms as well. But it's basically about visibility. It's about people who need your 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 services, your products, uh, being able to connect with you. So there, there's layers to it. The first is we call sort of indexability, crawlability, very technical terms. But can Google bots get to your site? Is it are they is it accessible? Uh, can they navigate through the pages? That kind of thing. And then also is is your content useful? Yeah. Are users connecting with it? Are you telling a story? Are you directing them uh, to to desired actions? Uh, so search engine optimization is really about looking at the website for sure, the content, as well as other things like, you know, your Google My Business or Google Business Profile, all of those kinds of things. And just making sure they're optimized, right? They're set up correctly so that users can find you and that search engines uh, can, can can access you. Listen to someone. I mean, I, I did digital marketing myself before as, you know, working for an organization selling digital marketing, but I'm not a guru when it comes to that, nor do I claim to be. But I did listen to some podcasts and some some few things that are, you know, essentially defining SEO in a way. And I wanted to hear your opinion on it. Yeah. SEO, like the, the expression is basically SEO is really like location, location, location when it comes to real estate versus this is on the web. Yes. How is that? I count? couldn't agree more. And I actually wrote a blog a couple of years ago for our website about, I called it Google real estate, right? Yeah. And the idea that even we call it the search engine results page, SERP, SERP. Uh, is has real estate, right? And there's there's desirable locations. There's less desirable, which is you know page twenty five of Google, not so desirable. Not a lot of people want to live there or, or or even even visit, right? Someone used uh, to say you could hide dead bodies on the on the twentieth plus page, probably on the second page, <laughs> honestly. And we know how we navigate, right? We go yeah. through. First of all, we trust Google. We trust that you know the first couple of results are probably curated well and that the algorithm has some intent behind it and we're just lazy as well so we're not likely to, to scroll through yeah. so yeah so uh, the idea of location location of being visible being prominent uh, local businesses google business profile right something that has your your address your reviews uh, directions those kinds of things can be critically valuable um, your your hours if you're retail making sure you know if you're a restaurant that people know if you're open or not is really important so owning that real estate on the search and results page is critical. There's things called featured snippets, uh, picture if you have, you know, recipes, uh, sometimes that will be pulled into the top of Google. Uh, so that's really valuable. And then there, there's even, uh, it's called rich snippets, but the ability to embed things like uh, reviews or author profiles, those kinds of things into the the actual result. All of those both improve the the real estate, right? Maybe it's a little bit of curb appeal, let's say, for, for your listing, or they're actually just more desirable locations to be. And again, users want to go to popular places. Yeah. Is there such a thing as the right way or the wrong way to do it? 
Yeah. Smart SEO. <laughs> Very much so. So in SEO or uh, even digital marketing, we talk about white hat and black hat. And this comes from old cowboy movies, that, that kind of thing. And the idea of black hat are people who are willing to bend the rules, act unethically, maybe even illegally, sort of contravening terms of service for sure. They, it can be effective, honestly, but more and more those kinds of tactics are being uh, addressed and, and, and you can be penalized or even, even blocked from Google. And then white hat is doing things sort of the honorable way, the right way, those kinds of things, which usually take more time, cost more money and, and are you know more difficult things to do. Uh, but the long term impact of right writing content that that resonates with your audience, uh, designing beautiful web pages, uh, even things like this podcast and video content and infographics and ebooks, all of these things that really provide unique value to to your audience, create something of value. Uh, all of those things are the in my opinion and certainly SEO plus opinion the right way to do yeah. things. It's an investment, but in the long term we really are and the uh, biggest thing that I find, because I work with a lot of businesses on the commercial side of real estate, right. you know, a lot of the businesses that we help out, it's, you know, the small mom pop shop, the retail, the office, this and that. And the biggest hurdle that uh, I always going to hear is like, oh, it's expensive. It's expensive. It's going to cost me money. Let's let's shed a little bit of light on that. What are, you, what are your thoughts on that sort of statement? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, it's no surprise to say you get what you pay for and, and SEO speaking specifically about that, can be free. It can absolutely be free. There's there's tons of great guides out there. There's even plugins you can install on your website that will uh, sort of give you a checklist or, or, or guide you in, in, terms of, in terms of the optimization. SEO could also cost millions of dollars a month. And we think of, I know you're speaking mostly of sort of small businesses, but enterprise, banks, um, mm. insurance companies, those kinds of things will spend millions of dollars a month just to protect their position. Just to make sure if I'm number one in the search result right now, I want to stay there. And they will they will invest in teams of people or, or outsourced agencies. So it's really just a matter of where you are, what your goals are, what your tolerance is. We actually had a, a prospect come to us at one point and we gave our pricing, which is middle of, of the road, maybe high end for some local businesses. And they said, actually, I think your prices are too low. I'm concerned that you wouldn't really understand our needs and make the right investment to achieve our objectives, which was the first time we had ever heard that it was quite interesting. Uh, so, yeah, cost really just comes down to where, where you're comfortable with. Uh, certainly SEO, if you're somebody who is a little bit savvy, again, read some articles, uh, even generative AI, go to chat GPT and ask for some advice. You'll probably get the foundation done pretty well. The challenge is your competitors probably have a similar foundation and it's how you can uh, sort of bridge those gaps where where the real expertise and skill comes. Yeah, and like the from my expertise with that, with that, like, I mean, and again, I'm, I just, I used to sell the service. I'm not necessarily as expert as you are. Obviously you guys own your own company and all of that, but it's always been like a, it's not like a set it and forget it kind of mm -hmm. lifestyle, right? Like whenever it comes to SEO, it's like, you really have to be always improving. Yeah. And I think the, the big, there's two big causes of that. One is the search engines themselves, the algorithms are changing, or again, there's new search engines that come on the market and you have to consider and take take those into account. Uh, user behavior changes. You know, we we just navigated the pandemic, moving to, for example, uh, you know, e-commerce. Right? People going, I can't go to a mall. I'm going to be shopping online. So user behavior absolutely changes. But the third part is is competitors. Your competitors are trying to win as well. Your competitors are pushing. There, they probably are getting support in in these areas. So the idea of, you know, I did SEO for a month or I got a project or whatever it is, this idea of it's a checklist that's completed. Let me be clear, do that, start with that. But in the long term, you're going to see a, sort of a, a deprecation of, of, of what you've done. And it's, it's, it's always evolving and you should be too in, in your online Yeah, presence. yeah. It's kind of like a, a cleaning house, right? Like you clean the house once, it doesn't mean that it's going to stay clean forever. You Absolutely. do have to kind of keep that maintenance yes. daily. Uh, or monthly or weekly, whatever, whichever way you do it, the more obviously that you pay attention to it, the better it gets. Yeah, very much so. And and there should be the right level of Zoom, right? The idea is not to go in every single day and, and delete a blog post that got no traffic yesterday. That's that's way too, too granular. But if you're looking on a quarterly or yearly basis, really understanding what's working, what's not. We, yeah, pruning is is an important part of uh, you know the health of a garden or a tree or whatever it is. It's absolutely the same thing with your website. Social media, which affects SEO certainly and, and in the service we also offer, uh, you know, if somebody's scrolling through old posts and they see maybe a service you no longer offer, that can be undermining to you and, and can cause confusion or frustration. 
You might see old promos, old pricing. Prices have certainly changed in the last couple of years. Old team members that may, uh, again, cause confusion, those kinds of things. So always keeping an eye on it. Uh, pruning is a great word. Maintenance, all of these kinds of things is a very important yeah. part of it. And when we notice, like, for example, as a realtor myself, like mm -hmm. my online presence, you've got the, you know, the Facebook, you have the Instagram, you have the YouTube, you have all of that stuff. And it seems, and rightfully so, like they're all kind of segregated in a way. Yeah. What are your thoughts about the website being kind of like the bringing everything all together or is that something that you should be doing or you shouldn't be doing? Yeah, it's something we we really uh, believe in and emphasize for a couple of reasons, especially in, in the current environment. So the first is the idea of, you know, so generative AI, this this new AI era that we're in, where there is and it's happening in the States. It's going to come to Canada. If you if you ask a question, you know, who's the best realtor in Ottawa or something along those lines, Google will provide an answer. So they won't even go to websites. They will just feel like I have the answer and I, I'm, I'm set. Um, but that information has to come from somewhere. There needs to be a true source. The what Your website is is the only place that you truly control where you can say that the messaging of who we are, what we offer, what our unique value propositions are, that is the, the single source of truth for your business, your entity, whatever it is. The second piece, and uh, Brock Murray wrote a really good article about this, is, is third party risk or platform risk. And we've seen this where maybe you're like, I built a huge Facebook community, have, you know, 100,000 followers, whatever it is, and something changes in Facebook or they have new settings or change the algorithm uh, and your audience dries up. Or there have even been social media platforms that come and go. Like think of Clubhouse was really big for, for a little bit and sort of disappeared. So if you make investments in, in that, those platforms and you think, well, all of my business comes from Facebook and then that disappears, you actually are left with nothing. You control nothing. And if you go to the terms and services of these, of these, you know, Facebooks and Googles, they're not on your side and, and you don't own any of this stuff, right? No, at the end of the day, it's their platform. You're right. right. It, it's basically like, I like to equate it to like leasing a space somewhere. At the end of the day, if the landlord decides they're going to up and leave or sell the place, you're gone. Exactly. Exactly. So the, your website is the one thing in the digital space that is is yours and assuming you pay your hosting bills and you take yeah, care of that yeah, kind of stuff. That, that's the, yeah. the, the kicker is yeah. you got to be paying your hosting bills. <laughs> pay your hosting bills. They shut you down. Yeah, very much so. But assuming you're doing that, please do that. that then that is the one thing that you are, you are guaranteed will be, will be made. So when we go back to some of the services that you guys are offering, you, you did mention that you do a full digital marketing spectrum. Tell me a little bit more about the services, like the breadth and width of the Absolutely. I'd, happy, I'd be happy to go into any of these. So SEO, our primary service, mo uh, the majority of our clients are on SEO. Uh, the next most prominent service is, is paid ads. So we've been doing this for just as long as SEO, but Google search uh, meta ads are our biggest ones. LinkedIn certainly becoming a, a bigger platform. It has a more expensive uh, cost per lead or cost per acquisition, uh, but certainly for business B2B type type clients, it's 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 really, really valuable. And dipping our, our hands into the TikToks, even Spotify ads, the, the, the you know, other kinds of platforms as well. We do web design and development. We specialize in WordPress is, is the primary uh, platform we develop on. So we do everything from scratch, mock-ups, uh, you know, wireframes, the whole deal. You write the content for it. We'll create your logo, whatever it is. And our team does, uh, I think, exceptional work <laughs> in that in that space. Content writing, social media, we do written social as well as uh, short form video, digital PR, which is a sister of, of SEO. It's about getting links and, and placements and, and sort of brand notoriety. My Our team actually got me in the Globe and Mail talking about uh, work-life balance and, and vacations oh, all, amazing. a couple of weeks ago, which was uh, which was very cool. My uh, my family was excited about that. <laughs> so anyways, th those are our those are our a celebrity on our hand. Check it out, guys. <laughs> Very much so. But uh, but yeah, so so across and email marketing is, is another service we offer. Uh, not a huge part of our service, but we'll, we'll do sort of email marketing, whether it's, you know, sales emails for e-commerce, in, even internal newsletters for, for some organizations. We have an HR organization uh, and it just helps keep, you know, uh, dialogue open with their team. But really, it's across the spectrum for us. Yeah. So a lot of the times we notice like for websites, for example, you did mention you guys use WordPress. And yeah. This is something that your platform is, is based on. But for someone, for example, that's looking at connecting those websites, and I'm going to be a little bit technical here with a CRM tool, mm -hmm. like a custom relationship management tool. Yeah. Is that something that you guys would facilitate? Is that something that you're capable of? Tell me a little bit more. Yeah, very much so. So usually what we're doing, and, and often I'd say actually 90% plus of our clients come to us with an existing website. Maybe it needs some modifications. Maybe we'll do a project, but but we're often not going in order to in order to work with us. We need to start from absolute scratch. We're, we're not going to do that. Um, but there are clients who say, 
I'm ready to kind of explore. And so we'll work with them. We'll figure out what are your needs? Is this even the right platform for you? And, and sort of uh, navigate that. We can do custom integrations. The beautiful thing about WordPress, it's it's the the largest CMS. It's called a Content Management System. All these little acronyms, right? Yeah. It's the largest CMS in the world. So there's so many plugins and integrations that that have been considered. So you name any CRM, whether it's Salesforce, HubSpot, like you go through the list, there's likely a very high quality integration, maybe even developed by WordPress or developed by Salesforce. And it just make, that makes that very, very easy. But yeah, our team absolutely does integration, a lot of consulting and strategy to, to support in it. And I love that question because that's the reality of a business owner is not, I just, I want a pretty website over here and my business actually function over here. Connecting. Correct. Is, correct. Is like a lot of the times, for example, you'd be working with an accountant, they've got their accounting uh, software like Sage, and then, but they still want to be able to capture clients that come to their website through that. Uh, or, for example, for us, real estate, I've you know, got my own website, but in the same token, I have a CRM that will capture anybody that comes in as a lead and, and that kind of stuff. So like, you want to be able to have that flexibility. Yes. So what you're saying, and if maybe rephrasing it in a, in a different way, is as long as that there is some sort of an API or like yes. a, an application, I should, should maybe yeah. <laughs> try acronyms. not use acronyms, right? <laughs> application, yeah. program, or interface, I think. Yeah, that's very cool. good, yeah. That as long as it exists, you should be able to somewhat link it and... Yes, yes, very much so. And there's even third party ways you can do it. I'm not advising this, you know, ideally. The, anyways, but like Zapier, if you yeah. heard of a thing like that, where you can have it go to some kind of third party interface that goes to the website, goes here, the CRM goes here, and, and they're able to talk to each other. The web is incredible nowadays. And like you name it, it can probably be done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry we're geeking out here, but <laughs> those are some of the terms that come with, when it comes to marketing. At the end of the day, it's all digital, it's all out there. Like it's new for a lot of people, even though it's been around we've been using websites for what 25 30 years now it's still new to a lot of people that are trying to bring their business to the future so we've talked about digital marketing mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit more about the black hat white hat mm -hmm. situation yeah. and explain to some of the audience what do you mean by black hat what do you mean by white hat and what do you prefer you work with yeah on record white hat first no definitely white hat always and forever and you know honestly I'm jealous of black hat people. I'm jealous of people who who ethically can can kind of go into into muddy waters and who can sleep at night and who are okay with the risk that they're they're putting on their clients. And honestly, it can be very effective. You can make a lot of money, but again, just just for me from an ethical perspective is like in the long term the good guys win. Like that's what I believe. So so we try to go there. So talking about black hat SEO specifically, an example of a, of a couple tactics. So uh, there's these things called private blog networks, PBN, another little acronym, uh, where basically they're, they're effectively fake websites. So you can buy these websites with expired domains. So say there's a, a website, uh, uh, just bear with me, you know, Hilton Hotels goes out of business and their web, their domain becomes available. You can buy it, put up a fake kind of website and point links to it uh, or, or use that to point links to, to client websites. It's not really real. It may look real, especially to unassuming uh, users, but because that Hilton websites has authority and history and reputation. Uh, you're basically able to to parasite off of that and and get SEO benefit. Mm -hmm. So this is a thing that happens all all the time. People have networks of thousands of sites, and one of the the original sort of um, patent for the Google's PageRank is is effectively this idea of like votes of confidence. Other websites saying, "Yep, they're good people. Yep, they have good information on their website." It is a really, really important part, even today, of, of ranking factors. But if you're just faking that <laughs> and it's not an actual vote of confidence in the long run, it's it's going to be revealed because people are going to go to your website and go, actually, there's not this seems scammy or this this seems irrelevant or, or whatever it might be. So that's that's for sure a tactic. Another one is called Parasite SEO. And you can probably see just from the name that it's probably a little bit a black hat. Kind of very creative. Um, but basically, this is the idea of using a really trusted domain like Facebook there was a big thing with, with Huffington Post. They would allow guest posts. So you go, you make a guest post on Huffington Post about your client, the website, and of course, links directing there. Well, it's a link on Huffington Post. That's a good link. Uh, and then therefore, the, the authority increases, right? So that, that can be, again, an effective tactic. But in the long run, it's going to be caught out that, you know, the, the journalists at Huffington Post are not writing articles. This is, this is kind of spammy garbage. And the long run, uh, this stuff gets discarded. And from a white hat perspective, so we've explained, mm -hmm. obviously, the black hat in a way. There's a lot more examples, but let's just talk a little bit more about the white hat. Yeah. What are the best practices to 
you know, have good SEO and all of that. Yeah. So, so White Hat, there, there's a, a principle that's that's part of Google's uh, quality. It's called Quality Raiders Guidelines. I'm not going to give the acronym, but you can probably guess on that one. That it, it's is this another acronym called EAT, uh, E-E-A-T, Expertise, Authority, uh, and Trust is, is basically the idea. Um, and so we've really become advocates of this because it feels it feels right, which is as a real estate agent, as a, as a doctor, a dentist, a restaurant owner, you name it, you have expertise, you have authority, and we want to build up trust, which is, uh, I'll speak to dentistry, for example. I don't want generic keyword stuff, you know, Invisalign Ottawa, Invisalign Retainer Ottawa. I want value of what do I do, uh, like, you know, at night, what's, what's the best practice for applying my, my retainer? What do I do if I get food stuck in my teeth? Like things that are real problems that users have that they're looking for an expert to to resolve. So when we can have our, our clients either write that content, advise us, review it medically, you know, again, speaking about dentists, that's an example of a white hat tactic where you're really creating something of value. You're sharing your expertise and your authority uh, and you're, you're creating something that users connect with. It's, it's time consuming. If you're a dentist, you're very, very busy. You're in people's mouths all day. Uh, the last thing you're looking for is to then sit down and write a blog, right? Uh, it can be expensive if you're if you're working with a third party provider, a content writer, a freelancer, whatever it might be. It takes time, all of these kinds of things. But in the long run, your website actually becomes a, a source of, of truth, a source of meaning uh, and value. So that's an example of a white hat tactic is, is developing meaningful, unique content. Again, podcasts, videos are wonderful ways to do this as well. Even the conversation we're having right now, these words we're speaking are not being spoken somewhere else. They're unique and they're from our minds. Yeah. And that's something that users really, really value. So it's really just like when it comes to, I guess, the EAT acronym there, yeah. it's mostly like what the reader or what the, uh, in the terms of Google, their searcher is yep. resonating with that actually becomes a little bit more an authority because, you know, it's all behind the scenes backed up with fact exactly w whatever the niche is again you could be a guitar instructor it's like you know things about teaching guitar you have techniques that you have developed through your years of playing it sharing that with the audience Th those are examples of things for sure sounds great i encourage folks out there to reach out to you guys at seo plus and other services out there that are you know filling the city with fantastic businesses helping a lot of businesses in the city but for now what i'd like to do is i'd like to I really thank you for being on our podcast, letting the folks know what SEO Plus is all about and invite the folks out there to just continue watching this podcast because we're always going to be talking about businesses, organizations, nonprofits around the city that are going to be bringing a ton of value to the city. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's really just a way for us to showcase all those businesses out there. So for folks that are watching, thank you so much, Amanda. Thank you so much for being on the show. Anytime. Thanks for having me. Thank you for, for you know, being here and, and sharing some of the, the wisdom that you guys have. And again, thank you so much for uh, watching. And if you like what you see, please don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe because there's a lot of episodes that are coming out and there's a lot of intense conversations with businesses around the city. So hit that bell icon so this way you can get a lot of, you know, alerts and things like that.